Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Hi, folks. Welcome back. Uh, I was going to take a few days off from the craziness of the world, the craziness of the Democrats and the progressives, and just in, just the craziness in general. But after the incident that happened in Texas, and Beto O'Rourke pulled, and what the media is doing now, I can't stay out of it. I have to mention it now. You'll notice I don't have all my equipment with me. My podcasting equipment, so I'm doing this on the fly with kind of a a low-end laptop. Hopefully it'll work out okay, but I feel it's worth mentioning. And the fact of the matter is there's a opinion on Fox News from Tucker Carlson. It was basically his, his monologue, his intro last night, and it is an opinion page. Unlike other media outlets, when Fox has an opinion page, it's an opinion, not news. They put opinion. Tucker Carlson, following Texas school shooting and Buffalo tragedy, leaders should ask this question. Tucker Carlson explains shooting suspects, and I won't even say their names, were obviously mentally ill. Of course they were. And he talks about how over the years, young men have been just changed dramatically. In the past 10 days, two separate teenage boys have committed horrific horrific massacres in public places. On May 14th, an 18-year-old, which, by the way, I didn't know him personally, but I remember that kid because he came in my store a few times, the one in Buffalo. He's from a town that's right next to my hometown here in Binghamton in Conklin, New York. I remember that kid, and then the kid, of course, in Texas. Both of them were obviously mentally ill. The people around them knew that. Both killers had told other people they planned to commit a mass shooting, and then they did. So what can we learn from this? Well, first of all, the first kid laughed later, the one that went to Buffalo and said, well, when I made that remark about causing harm at a graduation, They put me under psyche valve, and I lied, and I told them, listen, I was just trying to get out of going to the graduation. Amazing to me. The most obvious answer is that the system in place didn't work. I got to give that one a round of applause. I don't have my my, uh, podcast equipment here to do it. I mean, let's tell the truth here. I am very, very pro-law enforcement. Very much so, but endorsed by them every single election I've ever been in. Always been a pro two way advocate. I think it's one of our best, except for the First Amendment, one of our best amendments in the Bill of Rights. But why were those guys standing outside? There's videos that I've seen of of people outside the school in Texas. Telling the begging the law enforcement officers to go inside, go inside. That kid was in there for 40 minutes. First of all, how the hell did he get in? In there for 40 minutes. That's a long time when you're standing outside waiting to see if any of your children or maybe some of the employees, your wife or your husband, father, mother, aunt, uncle is going to have an issue and make it out alive. 40 minutes is a hundred years. Why didn't they go in? Uh, I forget what the one a few months ago, another one. The security guard and the cops wouldn't go in because they don't want to be blamed if anything goes wrong. Just like Tim Poole mentioned on his episode today of the young lady on a subway, I forget what city it was in, and she was assaulted, R-A-P-E-D. And everybody stood and watched and did nothing. I don't want to get involved. 
He mentioned you see it all the time in malls, a little small kid that got separated from, from his parents, crying. And there was a news reporter, he said there, that said when the man walked up and eventually somebody helped the little girl, the news reporter asked the, the gentleman, why didn't you get involved? He says, they're going to blame me for abducting her. This is what's become of our society. Now, here's the thing. If the woke progressive media and all their and all their minions, basically zombies, city urban liberal types, C U L T, were screaming as much about violence with guns in big cities as hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of black men. I won't even call them men, basically boys, are gunned down every single year. Hundreds and thousands of them. Yet you get crickets about gun control or even reporting it. When the van went through the Christmas parade, the media said, van plows through uh, a parade, injuring X, killing X. It's hypocritical. If they raise hell as much about those murders in the big cities as they do about incidents like this, I might give them some credibility. But to use the death of small children, especially small children, for political gain, absolutely is over the hook off the cliff, whatever whatever saying you want to use, it's really effed up. I don't have my equipment here to beep out my language, so I've got to tone it down a little. It's amazing to me. Unbelievable. I mean, literally within a half an hour. And then there's a Republican bill concerning the safety of children in schools. And what does my senator do, Chuck Schumer? He kills it. They say, well, we have the majority. No, you don't. It's 50-50. It's disgusting. So all, any, any attempt at even trying at the federal level to make kids safer will be squashed. And then we have our president... And I say our president because sadly he is our president. That says anybody that wants an AR-15, all they want to do is kill people because that's all it's for. It's a lie. It's nonsense. Now, I am not an expert on firearms. I, will, I won't say when I had my business, and I still won't say whether I own a firearm or not for my personal protection. That's between me in my family, and God, nobody's business what I have, but I'm a huge advocate for the Second Amendment. It's not what those guns are for. It's ridiculous. Now, this is a really, really long article, and the fact of the matter is, I'll just read part of it. A person who is intent on committing violence is very hard to stop under any circumstances. Ask in London. You can't get a gun in England. It's almost impossible. So what happened? You had knifings. People being killed by knives. Well, they do. They ban knives. I mean, come on. An act of Congress isn't going to do it. Neither will gun control. There are more guns in this country than there are people. There always have been. Whoever you feel about that fact, you could acknowledge they will never get rid of all those guns. The Constitution prohibits that. And you would set off a civil war if you tried to do it. Yeah. Abortion in the Second Amendment. It would set off a, a spark that would explode a powder keg. Then, of course, you have our ex-president here, Obama, saying that he compares George Floyd to the, to the shooting in Texas. These people suck so bad. Here's the ass hat right here. Not even going to say his name because I don't think he deserves it. And you can read on, but I'm going to leave the link 
in the description to this article. I think it's worth reading. It's really, really long. And this is a paragraph I think sums up a lot of the opinion. So gun control, whether you find the slogans appealing or not, will not stop the next next two uh, shooters, I won't say their names, and every national person knows it. The only way to stop these killings is to figure out why American society is producing so many violent young men. There is a reason they are acting this way. What is that reason? It's not just mass shooters, by the way. It's the ones you see on television. It's gangbangers and carjackers and armed robbers and indiscriminate haters who put strangers in front of subway trains. True. We have a lot of people like that in the country. All of a sudden, more than you might think. Why are they acting this way? It's the only question that matters. Of course, it's the only question our leaders hate to address. Because there's nothing in it for them. There's nothing in it for them politically. And it's an extremely difficult, difficult problem to solve. And we live in a society, we want instant results. We have a problem, snap. Pass some legislation and it's solved. But that won't do it. Anyway, I don't want to go through the whole article. Like I said, I'll leave a link. Because I'm on my laptop here, it's not that great, so I can't really do longer videos, but I just couldn't just stand by and watch these morons like Beto O'Rourke demonize Republicans and conservatives and gun owners. The fact of the matter is, 50 years ago, when I was 15 years old, there were more guns per capita in the United States than there are today. Fact. They'll say, well, they're more deadly now. Listen, guns were plenty deadly. Plenty deadly 50 years ago. But yet we didn't have this. So Tucker is right. Our society in part is crumbling from the inside. Young men are being being just brutalized verbally, emotionally, and especially white young men. Why is that? It's been going on for a couple of decades now. Just young men feel like garbage, like dirt. They've been doing it right along. And now comes the price to pay, at least in part. The answer is a long-term thing, but of course politicians aren't interested in the long term because by then they'll be out out of office. But I know one thing for certain, the the cure to this is not the taking away of firearms from people. That is not the answer. That's putting a Band-Aid. That's like having a brain tumor, a cancerous brain tumor that's causing you migraine headaches. So what do you do? You take painkillers to stop the pain. It doesn't solve the problem. And this is what these morons are doing. I tell you, you start getting some states, they're going to start taking away weapons. It's a spark, just like the election of Lincoln was a spark. Just waiting, there's this huge powder keg just sitting there, waiting for a spark to hit it to explode. Abortion, gun rights, those are the top two that will start pockets of civil war in this country. The likes nobody's ever seen. Will it be like 1860? Of course not. But it will disrupt this country in ways people don't even begin to even imagine or dream of. Now's the time for everybody to calm down, but it won't happen. Why? Because the media won't allow it. They want clicks. They're dying, and their dying breath, they're going to take us down with them. And politicians, on both sides of the aisle, I have to admit, but mostly on the Democrat side, want this issue. They don't want it solved. They want the issue. And that's what Democrats have always been like. 
So stand firm, conservative people, decent law-abiding people that love their country and they want to protect the Second Amendment. Do not shrink when these things happen. It's not the guns. It's the people and what's become of our young men. God bless. Until the next time, goodbye and good luck.